Hi everyone and welcome back. If you're able to, please head over to our paid subscription channel with the link below and subscribe to that one. You'll get extra content and you'll get to see it a little earlier than everybody else, but most of all you'll be directly supporting the Airworthy rebuild of Hawker Typhoon JP843. Every penny goes directly into our efforts here at Typhoon Legacy. So this is episode 5, and episode 5 and episode 6 are actually uh, backtracking a little bit into my pre-filming days to give you guys some insight into how I form each of the frame segments in the Typhoon's monocoque structure. Um, and this is something that I've done quite a bit of over the last little while, and I'm, I'm pretty happy that it's nearing its end here. There is 94 frame segments that I did this process to, and um, I'm ready to move on to something else. So I hope you enjoy the episode, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them below. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care. One of the big time savings that we see with the CAD work that's been done so far is uh, on lofting and layout. And it applies to both of our, our form blocks. If you can see here. Our form blocks, we use it, um, even though they're manually cut, we use the laser to mark everything with part numbers and datum lines and stringer cutouts just for reference. It gives us our centers for tooling holes. And then we've got a, another laser lofted chart that we can lay these form blocks on and um, identify the angles at different points. And then I manually cut them. So anyway, it's used for the form blocks and it's also used for our flat pattern. I get all of my material, I, I purchase it and I have it coated with PVC and it's just a thin film that they put on it. Different suppliers use different uh, colors. Sometimes they'll have white or blue or other colors. Um, and some people like this stuff, some people hate it. I, I tend to really like it because it allows us to put this into the laser and turn the settings really low so it doesn't even cut that thin coating of PVC, which you can see here. That guy there. Um, but we basically etch the surface of the PVC and it gives me all the lines like this one here it was a line that was etched and I can cut along it quite easily and it saves me having to constantly lay these parts out. Okay, so cut out our uh, flat patterns and you may be able to see, you might not be able to see, but there are just marks from the laser where each of the stringer locations are. And uh, we've got a router template for that, so those will be routed out, but to get them started I use the Rotex punch to punch a hole and take the bulk of the material out. We will do this for every stringer cutout. on each of the segments and then we'll go back to the uh, go set up the router and we'll do the final trim of these guys. So for the stringer cutouts I have made templates. There's two of them. One sec. The forward monocoque uses a slightly uh, larger one in a few positions and uh, but for the, this is frame JK it uses just one size stringer cutout. And you just line that guy up like that and you're good to go. Now with these uh, punches, punch outs that we've put in there, the router bit can come through and I can just trace that out and cut it out.
Okay, so now the flat pattern is done. Uh, there's still a lot of extra material on it that can be trimmed off as I, I work through it here. And it'll slowly get, uh, actually no, it'll slowly get uglier and then it'll get prettier. So uh, now I'm gonna form this flange here as the first flange. And that is, uh, it's gonna be a shrink flange. It's gonna bend over this uh, compound curve and we're going to have extra material so we have to basically reduce the amount of material and increase the material thickness believe it or not to get it to uh, fit around that curve properly so to do that we've got our form blocks uh, in this case we have multiple stages of form blocks to get these things to work uh, because of the complexity of some of the shapes that are in it so uh, to do the the first shrink flange we are going to take our primary form block and we'll sandwich it with a backing block that uh, all that does is it holds this metal flat between the two pieces and prevents when I hit this with the hammer it prevents this material here from bowing out if we didn't support it properly on the back <laughs> if I didn't support it properly on the back it would bow out and you'd end up with uh, how can I show this on camera you'd end up just with a bump basically it'd be a flat uh, web on the part and then kind of a bump out and a radius which is not something we want so we uh, use a form block which is this because those will be taking the shape of the form and a backing block to prevent it from bowing out on the back uh, everything is drilled with the tooling holes uh, that were determined location was determined by Hawker our laser has laid out on form blocks and on parts these tooling holes and they're uh, drilled accordingly now we're using 3 16 bolts that are tapered at their tip as our, uh, our pins to hold that, which isn't enough by the way. We have to also, um, when I'm doing this, I've got to have it in here clamped in the vise and I'll also put some clamps on either side because you really want very positive, positive pressure on those um, form blocks and on the piece being formed uh, to make sure you're getting as much support as possible. So. Stick those together, give them a little tap, and there we have it. So you see that? This is our, uh, our backing block, this is our form block. The form block has the angle of the flange that we want, or uh, very close to the angle because there is still with old material a little bit of spring back. And um, this one's our backing block, we're good to go and start hitting that. So I'm going to start by um, just roughly bending this over. So, now you'll be able to see remember I was talking about there's too much material as it wraps around well you can see it's starting to show itself now because there's too much material here and it's the more I push this in the more that's going to go up and at the same time, because of this, if I were to force this down as I push this over, it pushes these corners out. And you'll see, I'll try and show you later, if I work it too quickly and don't shrink enough, you end up uh, either tightening the radius in there or pushing those corners out and they almost um, lose their radius by doing that. So we want a uniform radius start to finish and we'll know for sure if those are too tight, that means that we haven't shrunk this flange enough. So it's gotta be done. In a couple of steps. So I'm gonna leave that one alone now and I'm gonna go on to the next one. So we'll have to take a, the shrinking, I use a, a shrinker stretcher uh, with composite shrinking jaws so as not to mar the material. Um, I'll shrink this a little bit before we knock it down further. So you'll notice that I also, I don't just smack it down a couple times, I slowly work it down. And that is because if you have a piece of material and you're, you're bending it over, as I am here, and you say flatten this side and then keep flattening it as it's up this way, um, if it's vertical here, like this one is, and I just smush that one down, it would stretch the material in between. And because this is a shrink flange, you don't want to stretch it or you're going to be doing a ton of extra work and chasing your tail all the way.
And when you get it close like that, um, you also want to draw it with the hammer. And that's part of the reason that I use a rubber face, not just because it's soft, because soft face hammer won't stretch that metal, but because I can grip it. So I can do, um, I'll show it sideways. This isn't how I'm doing it, but you can draw it by a glancing blow like that. So that's what I do. And it helps also pull the material around that radius. I really don't do too much of that until gets really close to the finished angle. So now, there's a couple things that we can do. That flange is too long, so we can take some material off of it, uh, shorten the flange a little bit, maybe not to the final length, but pretty close, and that'll reduce the amount of material that we need to shrink. So. Um, if you look at it this way, you can see that there's going to be a lot of shrink required to bring this material together and flatten out this bump. But when you think of it, if you look at it this way, you need more shrink out here than you do in here. So if we trim off a little bit of material right there, it's one area that requires the most amount of extra work that we can get rid of because it's just not needed. So it'll bring us down to a little bit of a more efficient platform. coming off at the camera. Ah! <laughs> so that ate up a ton of material, which is excellent. Now our shrink, remember, at that edge is going to have to be less and uh, it should make life a little easier. Another thing you can see when you need to shrink a flange is, uh, let's look at this guy. It's not too bad right now. I don't know if we can see that. Yeah, you can see the gaps that forms in between the part and the straight edge. Back onto the pins, back into the form block. Positive pressure, and we'll get right back on this guy. So you can see that it is not, it's not sitting down on the, uh, the form block yet. So we still need to go farther uh, on both of those, even some of the smaller ones maybe, um, which is just fine because we just started. Maybe I say we, because you're here with me. <laughs> so, same thing. Now with these guys, glancing blows. You can even do uh, a bit of a push, which works really well sometimes. And it's sitting pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, doo -doo -doo, use the rivet gun. So I just got a nylon die. I've got a drawer of these things. I can customize them and do whatever I need to do. But I'm gonna use that to draw this over. I wanna first tighten it up against that radius and then slowly work it and pull it over just as I was with the hammer. truly took the shape of that radius on the form block, which is good. Now I'll rotate my die and just give it a tap here. Pretty close. I can see that that's going to need a bit more shrink. So uh, let's move on. Now another reason that this is handy 
is, uh, remember I was saying that that radius can tighten up when you need to shrink. If you hit it down too much, it tightens that radius and it's a real, real bugger. But this way, I usually start at that corner, um, one corner or the other, and I draw it in and it pushes that radius back out. So you might actually see this material bump up again because of that. So indicating again that it needs to be shrunk. Now, another way of shrinking is just trapping a ruffle and those bumps are a ruffle ultimately. So if we can trap it, we can work it back on itself with a gun and actually force the material, as long as your form block and the um, punch or whatever you're using, in this case a nylon die on the gun, is soft enough that it's not gonna stretch the material, you can increase the thickness by working it back on itself. I'm not gonna do that in this case, it's too easy with the shrinking dies. So there you go guys, shrinkage. Now I know there is an amazing amount of experience following this project and uh, it comes through in a lot of the comments and a lot of the discussions that I have with people. It's fascinating, it's wonderful to see. So there's lots of ways to skin kitties and no, I don't skin kitties, but I know that there's different ways to shrink, there's different ways to stretch. Everybody has a different way of doing this kind of stuff. And if you want to share your techniques, please put them in the comments below. And uh, hopefully people that come to this page and see this specific video looking at shrinking will learn even more listening to some of you guys. So uh, our next episode is going to be a bit of a stretch. And it's going to cover off the inside flange on all of these frame segments, which is a stretch flange. So basically it'll be another bit of a step-by-step -step process to make sure that you end up with something like this instead of <laughs> something like this. So mistakes happen, and I'll give you a little bit of a teaser here. This one happened because I got lazy and I skimped the 30 seconds it would have taken to um, deburr that edge. And we had a stress riser and it just split open on me. Grain structure's all in the right direction, but simple little misstep, guys. So anyway, stick with us for a bit of a stretch. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys, talking to you, and hearing any comments that you have on the shrink video. Take care.